Welcome to Meet Your Neighbor. We're here at the beautiful Hopkinton Public Library today to talk a bit with Rona Kosain, the director of the library. Hi, Rona. Uh, Hi, thank Cheryl. Thank you for joining today to talk a little bit about you uh, and your life. We're here in one of your primary domains being the Hopkinton Public Library yeah. where you are director. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for having Oh, well, thank here. you for asking. Sure. Um, you've been director here for how many years? Seven years. Seven years. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, I know you had recently been interviewed uh, uh, over at HCAM uh, more about your job and some right. of the details of that. Uh, one of the statements that you had given at the interview was, you never know what tomorrow will bring. And I was curious about that. You, I think you were talking about work at the time, yes. but that seemed like an interesting philosophy uh, to mention and wondering a little bit about that, where that comes from. Sure. Um, I, th I think it works in personal life as well as in professional life. Uh, professional life, you, you do come to work and it's a public library and things happen. I mean, mm. all kinds of things happen on a given day. We have, of course, we have our routine, but then things take priority. We may have incidences or needs and computer problems or someone's looking for something we can't find or, or we have a problematic situation or we need to deal with that or something may come up from the town manager. Who knows? You know, all slow of thing. Um, just like personal life, you get up in the morning and, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So um, I say that definitely in a positive positive way that uh, that's what I like about my job a lot mm -hmm. because it's interesting it's fun because it's different every day mm -hmm. you know as you know um, in addition to what you have to do every day so mm. uh, would you say that that uh, has been something that uh, has guided you since childhood uh, you never know um, what tomorrow will bring yeah I mean uh, I don't know about childhood, mm -hmm. but um, because you're too young to think about those yeah, things. But right. <laughs> definitely, as as a grown up, um, I mean, I had a lot of health issues and other things. So it, it it's great because it has a very positive approach to mm -hmm. it. Because mm -hmm. you know you can be thinking about negative. Oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen. This and that. But if you keep on thinking like you know tomorrow is another day tomorrow is another opportunity there will be different things and you move on so I personally think that it, it has such a positive mm -hmm. message to it that mm -hmm. um, if you can keep that perspective that tomorrow is another day just just like in Gone with the Winds mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> tomorrow is another day mm -hmm. yeah I would say that's that's a guiding principle mm -hmm. for me and you are a resident of Hopkinton uh, did you grow up in the United States? I, I, I grew up in the United States but not in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Essex, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I came here with my parents in 1971 as a teenager and I went to um, high school for a couple of years and graduated from um, high school and went to college in Connecticut, New Haven and then graduated from college, my undergraduate. Then I moved to Boston to do my master's in library science at Simmons College and at the same time I got married. And uh -huh. That's when my career started. Mm -hmm. And eventually brought you here. Yes, absolutely, uh -huh. right. I, I, of course, I started my career in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm sorry, it's not New Hampshire, in, in Lowell, Mass, actually. Mm -hmm. I worked at the University of Lowell Library and also Wang Labs Corporation. It's a computer company, working part-time at each of those. And then I moved to New Hampshire, and that's when I, my professional career began in New Hampshire. And I worked in academic libraries as well as corporate libraries and public libraries. Mm -hmm. And eventually, um, I became a director at the Hopkinton Public Library about seven years ago. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And we are fortunate to have you and all that you do um, oh, for our community you. here in the library. Thank you. I, I love doing it. It's it's a great, you know, it's it's a great opportunity for me, and uh, it's a completely new side of my career because I've never managed a public library before. Mm -hmm. And also, I think Hopkinton is a great little town, um, small enough, uh, not not too big, but uh, very diverse. I I like it a lot mm -hmm. working here. I'm uh, curious about your beginnings. I know mm -hmm. that you grew up in Bangladesh. Uh, That's correct. As a child, and so I wonder what that was like uh, as a child 
uh, growing mm -hmm. up there, um, in your family life there? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's very different, mm -hmm. as you know, from the United States, because the culturally we're very different. Um, we have different history. Um, as kids, I would say we just had the basic, you know, we, if you think about the United States now and the toys and opportunities and the gadgets that kids have now, of course, if you compare with mine, even at that time, I still think that the kids in this country have a lot more toys and gadgets and stuff to play with. We didn't have that much in Bangladesh, mm. but so I did play with, you know, homemade dolls with my friends. Um, we had other avenues, for example, we, we enjoyed the season a lot to go out to play. I enjoyed my monsoon season very much. Um, what happened in the monsoon oh, season? Oh, well, monsoon is, you know, I'm sure you heard about monsoon, but mm. the, the best memory I have is like uh, just before any, any big rainy day usually the clouds would really gather and become very dark and you know the thunder is coming and then uh, most of the time we hang our laundry outside because it's a very hot day so you know kids would go off to get their laundry from their lawn and windows needs to be shut and it was a big chore for all the kids a big fun to fight against the rain and go and get everything done it's also beautiful when the rain would come it's very heavy you can hear them on your rooftop mm -hmm. and then Sometimes in about 10 to 15 minutes, it's all done and over with, and then the sun would come up and everything feel fresh and clean, mm -hmm. as if it cleansed everything. And then of course, you know, special flowers with fragrances like gardenia and things like that. So um, those are very fond memories that I, I have. Um, we didn't have many toys, but you know, we had other things. Mm -hmm. We'd go out and play on the field. We've played outside a lot. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think there's some of the games kids play here. I don't know their name, but um, well, let's forget about that. I don't remember, <laughs> but um, not as certainly not as many toys. But I do remember I had you know a little little bed for my doll and homemade mm -hmm. dolls. Or mm -hmm. when my uncles and aunts go abroad, they'll bring me some Western dolls mm -hmm. that I loved. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So Barbie. <laughs> yeah, something like Even, that. Yeah. yeah so. um, and monsoons, could they go on for days? Did yes. Did you experience that as well? Some, oh, mm. sometimes it would be very depressing. Mm -hmm. You'd go on for days, you can't go outside, everything is like damp and, you know, mm -hmm. wet. Um, and then you just can't do anything, you're cooped up inside. Um, and it causes all kinds of trouble and traffic jam and mm. just muddy and yucky. And it's not so much fun during that time. Yeah. Um, but then you'll have days that it just rains for 10, 15 minutes and then it's bright and mm -hmm. fresh. Mm -hmm. So both sides. But then we need the rain for, for, mm -hmm. for, the, um, for the crop and mm -hmm. so it's needed. So. so we had to learn how to cope with the natural world in that way. How yeah. it might confine you. Yeah. Or oh, to be honest with you, sometimes it would floods. Mm, yeah. You know, it would rain so much that it would wash away, like a village, or the rivers will swell so much. You know, the waves would come mm. and it would wash away the entire village. Mm, wow. And uh -huh, sometimes we won't be. have electricity for days because it will. So, mm. of course, you know, it has these natural disasters. We, we grew up with those. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's very sad, too. So. What would you say that helped you uh, during the time of uh, serious flooding or natural disasters, uh, living there, seeing different hard times? What? Yeah, I think it helped me in the sense, I think, appreciate life, you mm -hmm. know, that, you know, things are not always, you know, bed of roses and mm -hmm. people have hardship mm -hmm. and there are kids like me who are facing a lot of uh, difficulties in life and how fortunate we were, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to be able to go to school, to have a normal life, to have a... You know, to live in a beautiful home because there's so many other kids that they don't have, and there's so many kids that that didn't have that and still mm -hmm. don't have in that part of the world. So it's a great, um, you know, it's a great learning learning stuff to realize how precious life is. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah. it goes back to you don't know what tomorrow may bring. Mm -hmm. You also have to look at the positive side too. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. Mm. Um, and you have impressive impressive work ethic uh, these days. Uh, would you say that you have roots from uh, 
growing up in Bangladesh, uh, your parents at work, or maybe uh, chores that you had as a child there? Yeah, that influence oh, well, of what course. you do now in work ethic? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, as an older child, I was responsible to take care of my two um, mm -hmm. younger brother and sister and manage sometimes the finance and because back home there someone has to manage the household you'd have people hired help who are doing the work but someone has to take the responsibility because both of my parents were working I was kind of left in charge of that so that kind of uh, uh, helped me to learn how to manage things and and then um, eventually when I came here and I was going to college and that's when I fell in love with libraries where mm. I, I love researching I love research but then I was curious about how all this information is being managed. How this huge building with tons of books and magazines and newspapers, how, is all, how are all these things are organized? Mm -hmm. And I want to mm -hmm. learn about it. And that's when I found out that you can do a master's in library science. Mm -hmm. So after finishing my undergraduate, I moved on to doing a master's in library science. And, and same thing right now, you know, you still need to be organized and systematic and, and um, manage things. And that's what our, our work is all about these days. It's, managing and solving problem every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, that's an interesting path uh, that you have come over time. Uh, what would you say now being um, here in Hopkinton um, is something that you might miss from days of being in Bangladesh? Mm -hmm. um, I think that music is is something uh, uh, I still listen to uh, Bengali music, which I love, and the cultural part where you know we dress up. You know, of course, being a Bengali woman, I wear saris outside mm -hmm. when I'm not working, um, and then doing different cultural shows where we put different shows together, and song and dance and music and drama mm -hmm. um, in my language, in my mm -hmm. culture. So that's the part. Um, I don't miss so much, but I, I you know, I love doing mm. that. Um, and you stay connected to I, it I still, Yes, mm. I do. Mm. I used to perform. I stopped performing. Um, there's so many other things took priority mm. in life. Mm. Uh, I, do, I do. I do go to different shows. I, I travel within the United States for wherever, whenever there are uh, concerts or conventions and conferences. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh -huh. yeah, so it's the cultural side of me mm -hmm. that... Um, that I treasure and miss and like, and I like to continue mm -hmm. um, holding on to that. Mm -hmm. And you do go back and visit on occasion? I absolutely. Yeah. When mm -hmm. my, I have two daughters, and when they were younger, we used to go every two years because uh, my in-laws were there, half of my family members are there. And now we go, but maybe not as often. Mm -hmm. We certainly go to see my relatives. and. Of course, I mean, that's my route, that's where I was born, and mm -hmm. that's part of me that I would always like to go back and visit, mm -hmm. but I love being here. I, I you know, I'm, I'm so happy that I had the opportunity to come and mm -hmm. go to school and be the person I am today. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, f I feel so fortunate because I feel like I can mix best of both worlds, you mm -hmm. know, I, I bring um, things that I treasure from Bangladesh and then I learned the person that became I, the person I became today, the values and what's important in life and work ethic and education, being open-minded, in, encompassing everything and learn about different culture. This is a great country, I think, to grow up and, and live here. Um, and I like that too, so I'm very fortunate mm -hmm. to have, have both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that, I was also curious of what you appreciate. Uh, I think you said that. How about specifically in Hopkinton, that, since living here, um, one thing in particular maybe you enjoy I think about I, the town I think I, I think pe people in Hopkinton, they are, they are people are very dedicated. I see mm. so many volunteers, mm -hmm. not only volunteering in library, but in other different community events. We have different clubs and. That is something fantastic. Mm, people yeah. devote their time, people volunteer their time for all kinds of activities, poly arts and HCAM TV, you mm. do it yourself. This is something I really admire about Hopkinton, mm. that people in this town mm. give so much of their time to pursue their interest or mm. help out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just think that is great. Mm -hmm. I like that. Well, that. That's good to hear. Yeah, and people feel good about their community. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go, you see how passionate they are about the issues they face and the problems they want to resolve. So I think as a community, that's, that's really great to have very concerned citizens who are involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I like that a lot. Yeah. 
Well, um, and uh, thinking you see a lot of the community here at the library, uh, a lot of people in, interested in a lot of different things, um, coming to speak, right. or coming to request programs uh, in different ways. What do you think is one of um, the best things about your job that you enjoy and the diverse roles you have? I think that you just said that. Uh, I love, the, you the know, diversity. I love, yeah, you just said mm -hmm. that the programming is something I love, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to taking care of our routine, routine things and taking care of catalogs and books, but the programming that we offer, I really feel excited. Mm -hmm. um, every year we try to choose different kinds of programs so, because people have different interests mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to offer different kinds of program and have McGovern Trust to fund these programs. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of libraries don't have this financial capability. Mm -hmm. We have a trust fund for the library mm -hmm. and that trust fund allows us to bring multi all kinds of programs in the library. Yeah. and. It's been lately, every program we do, people show up, you know, mm -hmm. and people feel good about it. They may come and they come. We just like that. I like that a lot, doing mm -hmm. different programs and offering different services, uh, give people instructions how to use online, how to download books, you know, and, and find the information they want. Mm -hmm. You know, they come in with, the, everyone is walking through that door with the purpose. Mm -hmm. And whatever their purpose is, if you can help them, they, they like it and they appreciate it and I think being able to help mm -hmm. being in a library is something really great. I like that. That's great. Um, you just had Anne Hood here yes. uh, speak as Last an author uh, and uh, can you say a couple words about that? What, she, what did she talk about and how did she touch the community of Hopkinton here? She was a great, she's a great speaker. Mm -hmm. um, what she talked about uh, was very universal. It's about, just about life, mm. about growing up, uh, dealing with grief, dealing with um, um, adversaries and problems and how you overcome. Because and you, she lost her son? She oh. lost her daughter oh, her when daughter, she was five, right. and okay. very, very, within a very short period of time. But then she overcame and she, and how people are really connected, you know, people mm -hmm. help out. And um, you survive, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's about survival. You manage and life goes on, mm -hmm. you know. We have grief, grief is part of life, but mm -hmm. you move on. And also the other aspect of it, you know, you appreciate things that happened in the past, like she, when she was growing up, now she's all grown up, she treasured that life, that she didn't appreciate the fact that they were living in this beautiful Victorian house with mm -hmm. her great grandmother. Mm -hmm. As a grown up now, she's, oh, wow, wasn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. So we always kind of grow up and we, you know, we look back and then we appreciate what we had. Yeah. But yeah. at the time we have it, we don't, we don't realize. Mm -hmm. But um, it just, it was, it was just that, it just general you know, about life and growing up and, becoming a parent and move on. Mm -hmm. That is very mm -hmm. inspirational, mm -hmm. wonderful. The message about moving on and how you can. And connection, it. I think, that life is really, you know, everything is connected and, mm -hmm. and things work out. And also people helping people. Mm -hmm. You know, her mm -hmm. famous book, The Knitting Circle, uh, okay. where she, where the people in her knitting group helped her mm -hmm. overcome that grief. And there's more to life than just about yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you lost mm -hmm. your child, yes, but there's, there's a lot more going on about life and other people can help out and people do help each other and, uh, you know, you overcome that. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. a really great program. Well, it does sound like a really important, inspirational program uh, right. having here yeah. among many others that take place. Uh, do you find, uh, do you read a lot? Yourself? Uh, uh, I like to read. Director of the library? <laughs> <laughs> I like to read. I do read, but mm -hmm. not necessarily uh, books. Mm -hmm. I have to read a lot of book reviews, a mm -hmm. lot of reports. Uh -huh. Book reviews are part of our daily life because mm -hmm. we, we, yeah. we have to choose books constantly for mm -hmm. libraries. That um, seems like a fun part of the job, uh, selecting it, the books. It is, actually. Mm -hmm. It is. But the tricky part is what you may like, people may not like it. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is you always have to keep your keep your audience in mind. Mm. Would that be appealing to people? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, just because I like it doesn't mean the other people like. I also stay in touch with talking uh, 
touch with people by talking to our library staff who are at the front desk, the circulation mm -hmm. desk. Mm -hmm. They know a lot about what people like. Mm -hmm. So I often go to them and ask them, you know, what kind of topic they like, what's the in thing right now, what people are reading. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it is fun. It mm -hmm. is, it's never tiring. Mm -hmm. I love it. So it's at least half a dozen magazines. But a lot of research and reading still. Yes, because mm -hmm. you read book reviews and you read the comments about what the reviewers said. Mm -hmm. And then you choose what. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot, but it's, it's a continuous thing. It's and then I listen to NPR, and mm -hmm. then NPR may mm -hmm. talk about yeah. a book. Or you are watching TV, say Nightline, mm -hmm. or um, any other TV program or talk shows, they might be talking about a book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? So our History Channel, like it's, you're surrounded by it all the time, I think. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about people and providing the service they want, what people may want to read. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a fun thing. It's wow. challenging. <laughs> I just heard a seventh grade student in our town okay. uh, read his ode to books uh, oh. last night at a, a student event. Uh, why do you think, here's wow. a, a question for you, why do you think books are important for our society? Uh, wow. <laughs> um, because you learn from, by reading, mm -hmm. you, you do everything, it's knowledge, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's reading. I mean, if you don't read, then you are in the dark. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. so. Any form of reading is is always broadening your mind, opening your eyes, and I think it's the learning piece too. It's mm -hmm. knowledge and learning. And you know what? It's it's like never ending. There's mm -hmm. never you know. It's you can never say that. Oh, I'm not going to read anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not going to. It's like. I don't know how yeah. to answer yeah, that. Well, that <laughs> no, that, that, uh, there can't be one answer to that, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, you have a favorite book yourself? Mm, I can't say a favorite book, but I have lots of books that I've read that I like. For example, um, um, uh, Into Thin Air is mm. my favorite book. Glass Castle, mm -hmm, Half mm -hmm. Broke Horses, Obama's Dreams from My Father. Mm -hmm. uh, these are some of the books that I read. Oh, really that, like. that's good yeah. to know the director's uh, books <laughs> as well. I made like something <laughs> completely different next week. <laughs> so. And uh, you mentioned uh, weekends are uh, different and uh, you see your uh, family and friends. You have a family yourself, you're a husband, yes. and you have two daughters. Two daughters. Um, and you stay connected with extended family yes. and uh, do some traveling with your husband. You we mentioned. do. Uh -huh. Yes, we do. So there is some life beyond library oh, absolutely. and books for you as well. Absolutely. Uh -huh. yeah, I mean, yeah. life goes on. I mean, I go uh -huh. home at 5 o'clock. I try to turn my switch off and I turn into mm. Rona Hussein, the mother uh -huh. or the wife uh -huh. or, or a friend, you know, just like anybody else. Uh -huh. but, I, but I think the library stays with me all the time. Mm -hmm. I think I'm constantly yeah. thinking about you know how to decorate the library, how to make it pretty, how to make the space, um, you know, uh, comfortable for people. Wherever mm -hmm. I go, I am libraries with me, and, and I love it. Mm -hmm. It's great. Oh, that's good yeah. to hear. Uh, incorporating it into your life as a yes. whole. Yes. There are any other things that you like to do in your time outside of library, your creative self. Yeah, I like I like dec I mean I like decoration decorating. I make mm -hmm. my own drapes, you know, I set up different rooms. I love putting things together to make it look pretty. I like cooking. I like entertaining a lot. I like music. I practice singing music sometimes. You do some singing yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like to read. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Well, a lot of uh, different things. Yes. To I go to concerts a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love yeah. classical yeah. concerts, right? Uh -huh. Well, it, it sounds like you certainly live a full life within the library and then beyond as well. I'm lucky. And, uh, between yes. two uh, cultures uh, that you have lived your life as well. Uh, can you recall maybe a uh, best bit of advice you've ever received uh, about living, about life? Yes. Ah. <laughs> so quick. You cannot depend on someone to make you happy. Ah. Mm -hmm. You can't depend on someone. Happiness is something you have to kind of... Um, figure it out or mm. find it yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, you can't that's... expect someone else to make you happy. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is a great bit it of is. advice indeed. Yeah. Um, so, uh, do you, and do you have any um, thinking about our future uh, generation? you have any wish wow. for? Wow, uh, I have no idea because it's so different mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than how we grew up. Life's changed. Yeah. It's totally, 21st century is different. Yeah. 
technology and availability and the world has changed. Yeah. I wouldn't even dare. <laughs> <laughs> Just wish the world yeah. well as we yeah, move exactly, on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. We appreciate people mm -hmm. and each other and the time and the value and what we have. Mm -hmm. Well, we're lucky. Sounds like you've certainly learned that and lived that yourself. So thank so. you very much for your time and your words and uh, sharing of your life today thank here you. at the Hopkinton Library. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. Thanks, Cheryl. I'm Dr. Alan Beggs. A rare disease, or orphan disease, is one that affects fewer than 200,000 Americans. Yet nearly 7,000 such conditions exist, and the collective impact of these disorders is significant. Nearly 30 million Americans, or 1 in 10 people, suffer from a rare disease. The Genetic and Rare Diseases Information Center can be a useful resource for patients and their families, healthcare professionals, social workers, advocates, and community leaders wanting to find help for those with these diseases. Developed by the National Institutes of Health, the center has information in both English and Spanish on the current knowledge of a rare disease, research studies, genetic testing available, and advocacy groups to contact. It also contains recent articles from medical journals about rare or genetic diseases. For more information, visit the center at rarediseases.info.nih.gov. I'm Dr. Lauren Smith. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. Each year, two million Americans suffer a heart attack or stroke, and more than 800,000 die as a result. Millions more become disabled. The human and financial costs are high and continue to rise. The good news is that many of the risk factors for cardiovascular disease can be prevented or controlled. The Million Hearts Campaign is a national effort by federal, state, and local public health officials to reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke. The campaign emphasizes the ABCs of health, aspirin therapy, blood pressure control, cholesterol management, and smoking cessation. These are proven, effective, and inexpensive ways to reduce risk. I urge you to make your commitment to the Million Hearts Campaign. Talk with your doctor about the risk you might have and take the appropriate steps to good health. For more information, visit millionhearts.hhs.gov. Hello, welcome to HCAM Insights. Did you know that Hopkinton's television station has members? And I am not currently referring to the crew that make our shows. I mean our nonprofit organizational members, the volunteer groups that contribute to the life of Hopkinton. We are honored that they value what we do enough to pay membership dues. And that's why we go all out to keep you connected and informed about their events and activities.